All right, guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be talking more about scattering amplitudes. This is going to be the second video in talking about scattering amplitudes. We've done the zeroth order approximation. Now we're going to do the first order approximation. And then we're going to get into Feynman diagrams. So the next video is going to be specifically on Feynman diagrams, how they're useful, and what, it, what insight do they provide. And then we're going to start getting into the calculations for those Feynman diagrams. And then we'll see where that takes us later on. The book uh, goes on to continue talking about scattering uh, and Feynman diagrams in the context of interactions. And then after that, we get into a few comments that the book makes, and then we're going to get to renormalization and other pretty, a little bit more advanced topics. And so uh, with that being said, uh, we'll get into the video. Actually, before we get into the video, you're no I hope you're noticing that I'm producing content every Mondays and Thursdays. I'm uh, uh, putting content out there on YouTube for you guys to watch. Uh, and I intend to have this be somewhat of the pattern, right? So. Uh, Mondays and Thursdays, twice a week, I think is what is comfortable for me. If you guys want, are interested in looking up content uh, earlier before, or more frequently than two times a week, uh, please put your comments in the video below and I might consider uh, making videos early for those of you who are interested in maybe uh, putting them on a Patreon page uh, to um, and having you guys contribute if you want if you want to see early videos, basically. Anyways, let's get into the content now. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. So we're talking about scattering amplitudes, and we're on the first order approximation now. So last time we talked about the zeroth order approxim approximation, in which we considered just calculating this guy right here. And so now we want to calculate this guy right here. And so to do that, we're just going to consider that term, which is what I have down right here. Okay, so let's calculate this, right? So the time order approximation of this term is going to look like this, right? So the four, the, the fourth power is just going, I'm just expanding that right here. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're do using Wick's theorem, right? So the time order approximation of uh, this term is this term, the normal order approximation, plus all the contractions, right? So the contractions, we have these contractions and these contractions, and we're going to see that those guys will go to zero because we have uh, k2 and k4, k1 and k3. If they're not the same, which they're not, um, then that's going to go to zero, right? And same thing here. So these were important contractions that we saw in early in an earlier video uh, called the important contractions, right? So these two guys are actually going to go to zero uh, because the incoming and outcoming momenta are not the same. It's conserved, but they're not. K2 is not the same as K3. K1 is not the same as K4. There's a conservation of momentum, but they, it's not like K1 is exactly equal to K4 or uh, K2, right? Or K3, right? So again, there's conservation momentum, but the momentum is not always the, the, uh, the momentum of the two initial particles, uh, each individual particle is going to be different than each individual particle of the momentum exiting uh, the interaction zone, right, the, the black box. And so then we have this term right here. Now, this term is complicated because we have, if we remember the contraction between this guy and this guy, that is, uh, that's going to, that's going to contribute to, to some degree to our, to our diagram. Um, and that's going to contribute in a way that's so so the way i want to say this basically is we could once when if we contract this guy with this guy we're left with three other possibilities in which these guys can contract with if we're sort of left with this guy can contract with anyone over here or this guy but then once we pick one for this guy then we're only left with two possibilities 
And then once we contract this guy, then we're only left with one possibility. So this guy could contract with this guy. Again, we're only left, we're left then with three more possibilities. This guy can then contract with this guy, again, left with two more possibilities. So all these possibilities, when we multiply them out together, this is sort of a combinatorial thing, right? Uh, when we multiply them out together, we get 24, 4 times 3 times 3 times 1. These are all the different types of possibilities that can be contracted, right? So possi possibilities, I'll write that down, possibilities of contraction. And that equals 24 or we can just say four factorial. Okay, so where does that put us? So that puts us at 24, right? Because if we recall from our important contractions that these guys are going to essentially contribute um, a factor, let's see here, a fact, uh, the, the, these guys are gonna essentially contribute to a factor of one uh, when we do these contractions, so if you recall from from the um, from our important contractions, right? So this is essentially twenty four, and so when we put that into here, then we get if this is just if this not if it's just twenty four, then we just put that twenty four into here because we're saying that this guy right here is equal to this, so all of this gets replaced with 24, and we could see that the four, the four factorial here is going to cancel out with um, the, 20, the four factorial right here. And we're, we're left with this, this guy, and this guy, when we're integrating over a four, uh, a point in four dimensional space, we get, we get a volume, right? So our, our first degree term or our first degree approximation, right? We're calling this a first order approximation. So our first order approximation is on, it is I minus I times uh, a constant, a small constant times the volume of space that we're integrating over. Right? So that can be thought of as like, as thinking of our Feynman diagram. That's, if we have our Feynman diagram, here's our black box, right? And here is our incoming particles and our outgoing particles, right? It's, it's the, the volume of this box, right? The volume of this box is the contributor here in our second order, our first order approximation, okay? Recalling again that this this term here, the, or this this uh, constant here, the small constant, is a, the constant that we have put in the Lagrangian, and this is something to keep in mind also. Uh, so, what what can we say from this? Well, we could say that if v gets larger, then our first order approximation uh, contributes more to our scattering process. So you can imagine our scattering process, say, looking like this. Here's our larger volume now. Our larger volume. And I'll just color this the same way I colored uh, this guy right here. All right, so this is our larger volume. And here are our outgoing particles. Or in our incoming particles. So essentially, the, the, the first order approximation is going to contribute more to our scattering amplitude in this case, as opposed to this case. We're expanding our, uh, we're expanding our space-time volume. And when we expand the space-time volume, we allow for more diff for different types of interactions to take place because you could sort of think of it as because there's more space for more interactions to take place in. Whereas if we confine our volume to very, very small uh, point in space-time, then, um, 
then that the, then the the range of possibilities becomes less. Uh, the range of possible interactions becomes less. Okay. Same. Think about this also. We're thinking space time, so time also plays a large component here. In this case, the time interval is much larger, right? Because we're expanding space time. So if the time interval is much longer, then we allow for the possibility of a longer duration of time and therefore more complicated interactions could potentially take place within that longer uh, within that longer period of time. Okay, so again, this is space-time. Space-time volume. Space-time. So that is important, right? So we have that time component, the temporal component as well, contributing to our amplitude. Okay. So that's what we want to talk about for our first order approximation to our scattering amplitudes. What we're going to find is that um, second order approximations are going to be much harder to calculate. And we're actually not going to calculate those in this series, right? Because if you go on, if you go into the book, uh, the book sort of, it breaks it down in a way where we say, where it says the first order or the zeroth order and the first order order approximations are what you do as an undergraduate student. Uh, the second order approximations are what you do as a graduate student, right? There's actually a diagram in the book that says the second order, the second order uh, approximations are what graduate students do. And then the third order approximation are what postdoctoral students do. And then, uh, Fourth, fifth, and other order approximations are what computers do, or computer clusters do. Um, there's actually a diagram in the book that that, that actually talks about that, um, and so we're not gonna we're not, we're obviously not gonna go deep into the weeds with calculating second, third, fourth, fifth order approximations because it just gets really really complicated, and so we're gonna stick to. Uh, zeroth and first order approximations, and that'll suffice for this playlist. So the, the the main aim here is to teach you guys quantum field theory at somewhat of a more deeper level, uh, but not too deep to the point where you get uh, drastically bored or extremely frustrated with how long the videos get if we're calculating fifth order approximations to these scattering amplitudes. Um, but anyway. That is Scattering Amplitudes, and if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video where we will be talking about Feynman diagrams. So I'll see you.